This is a good one, right? What's that? Mini Ripperton? Uh, yeah, yo, yo. Some bars, Rory. All right, yeah, welcome back. Shit. Mega Late Show, episode number 148. We're getting real close to episode with number 150, which is when I'm going to end the podcast. The last episode of the Mega Late Show is coming in two episodes. Why are you going to end it? You guys speaking to well, my yeah, yeah, why, why are you gonna end? I'm it? not really gonna end it. I just felt like saying that right now. Shout out to my brother Late. I think he'd be pretty mad if I just ended the podcast. He's been putting a lot of work in, making a lot of phone calls from Atlanta and shit. But yeah, man, welcome back to what the Mega late. late Show. What up, Late? Uh, Tokyo Hip Hop Art and Culture, which is what we do consistently. Um, I want you guys to go back and check out the episode we did last week with uh, Erico. She is the head. Uh, head editor and the founder of sneakergirl.com which is one of the fir- definitely the first in Japan the first uh, ladies sneaker website and so check that out and man all the beasts that you're hearing in the background are brought to you by my man Soul Dope 95 I got, I got my main man Rory here with me today oh I don't want to call you Rory I want to call you DJ Tag call is me Roy. you can call me dj tag i mean i'm calling him call dj me mr tag. tibbles i'm just happy to be here <laughs> doc he he is um and, and you guys go back and check out the episode that we did with him that was quite a long time ago i don't even remember exactly what number what that was do you remember uh, that was a uh, 84.3 84 as i recall oh man well anyway shit one of my favorite DJs, man, one of my favorite hip-hop heads, even though he's like an old disgruntled hip-hop head that don't like independent hip-hop shit like that no more, yeah? Is that is that what it is now? How are you depends, feeling on new J. Cole? It depends on the, the independent hip-hop. I'm feeling that if, if you give me the J. Cole acapellas, I'm loving that You're shit. That. If you give me the J. Cole album, meh. Uh, I'm not feeling the J. Cole. I'm not going to listen to the J. Cole album. Everyone's been talking about that album. I don't, I don't, I just don't have any use for it. Give I don't me that, have any need for g- it. Give me the acapellas. Let me speed them up to 98 to 103 bpm and put some other beats over them yo we got a classic okay Uh, i mean i'm just trying to get him to listen to the weird shit he never liked the weird shit and that's where i i sit most consistently but yeah my favorite guy man um it was good seeing you dj the other day that was a first it was good to be back in fact that's the last time i saw both of you and i got super drunk that night so i apologize (laughs) if i misrepresented myself in any way was i was i all right you you were all right, and, and in the end, that was the genesis of why we're all here tonight. Yeah, yeah. Because that's when the agreement was made to come out here for episode one forty eight. Yeah, that's which right. Is tonight, only yeah. two left. Yeah, on, there's only two episodes left. You know, Buster Rhymes scared the shit out of me when I was a kid, and he had that. There's only five years left, and I was like twelve, like, oh my god, <laughs> how does this Wuha master know exactly when it's going down? Uh, he's got the esoteric knowledge, but um. Yeah, man. Uh, shoot, I met actually Mavina. I met you with Rory at the Black Lives Matter march last June, right? So it's been about yeah. a year. Yeah, it, it doesn't it, even seem like a year ago. No, it doesn't because we've mostly been shacked up in our houses. But we yeah. have, we did rendezvous at at Chateau de um, Tag. Is that is that how you would say it? Chateau de or is it La Chateau La? Casa de Tibbles. Okay, we, no, I, thought, I, I, I speak French. Okay, what Chateau is it? Chateau de Tag. Ah, Chateau there we go. Tag. Yeah, we were there, and we 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 had a good time on Halloween once. I yeah, think. yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we've also you know communed together a few other times. But man, I since I met you at that thing, and I was like, yo, this is like a tall Polynesian type of guy. He's like a mixed plate type of guy, and I was like, I fuck with him because soon as I walked up, he's like, yo, what are you, some type of Filipino person? And I was like, yeah, actually, I'm half Filipino. And he's like, yeah, I thought I could recognize it. You know what I mean? And most people can because, you know, that's who I am. But, yo, I did a lot of... I did... Can you tell us your name? Uh, My name is Mivina Maxwell Liu Fao. Oh, he hit us with the Maxwell, too. That's my middle name, yeah. All right, man. So I'm going to go ahead and give you some props and read a little bit about... I actually just took something right off of the internet. And I want you to just like rock with it for a second, right? I got a little bit of my notes here, but first off, it says you're an innovator, a legend. You come from a you you come from a long line, a generation of people who have been influential within the kind of Polynesian dance community and that community in general, musically and with with the dance. I guess yeah, it's the same shit, five, right? Yeah. Five generations. Five generations. Yeah. You yeah. you. It says here, the man, the myth, the legend. Mavina has single handedly changed the way America has experienced the Tahitian culture. Mavina comes from the legendary Liu Fao. 
Yeah. Nono Cena yeah, yeah, family. Yeah. Raised in Anaheim, California, danced 99.9% of his life. He was just dancing outside right now. Right. You know what I mean? <laughs> Trained with Otahiti. Had to sit him Inc. down just to record this shit. <laughs> in 98. Won numerous awards for his family as a dance group, uh, Nono Cena. And the list goes on. It says literally the entire blog could be dedicated to your accomplishments. Now, I knew you was killing it, but I listened to the Fire Knife podcast. And man, he has such a rich history within that culture that i just had no idea about because you just be chilling with us smoking icos and fucking drinking beers and shit <laughs> i had no idea why are you gonna put my business out there like i mean that? <laughs> that's what we do on the mega late show we're gonna talk all about all these things but but yeah man i, I had no idea that you kind of come from that can you tell me a little bit about like the genesis like who started it was your grandfather your right, grandmother right, right, tell right. us tell us about how it gets to you um well my background is i'm mainly um Oh, well, shit. Tell us what you do, actually. All right. Because so, is that as we'll accurate? That, right. And then so, we'll take it yeah. back to how you right, got right, to cool. doing what you do now. So, so well. uh, I, I live out here in Tokyo, uh, and uh, been here for about eleven years now. And what I'm doing out here is I have my own Tahitian dance group, um, based both in Tokyo and in Osaka. And uh, my wife and I, we we. We've been running our group out here, uh, teaching Tahitian dance to both men and women and kids and people of all ages. Um, and now, not only just Tokyo and Osaka, that's where our main central base is, but I also teach teachers. And I've been teaching from Hokkaido all the way down to Okinawa. How long you been in Japan doing that? Uh, now, 11 years. That's how he got that ill ass visa status, right? Yeah. It's been a long ass no 11 shit. years. Yeah. What, what made you want to come out here? Um, well, uh, I was invited to come. Can out I have here. you get closer to yeah, the Yeah, my bad, my bad. If, um, I, if I go like this, I mean, well, since we're on video, people, it's not like a secret anymore. Like when it's audio, I could do it. Yeah. I'll just say, we, get we on a mic, yeah. Mavina. I know. So yeah. I'm so used to being on mics and everything. Yeah, I'm just yeah. getting lazy right now. But uh, um, I was invited to come out here from um, a promoter. Now, the whole, I mean, Polynesian dance is kind of like the general word that we use for everything out here. But um, hula is huge out here. Right. Hawaiian hula. They have like estimated that the amount of Japanese people who dance hula is actually much greater than the population of the state of Hawaii. Let alone the number of actual Hawaiians. Wow. Yeah, I believe it. I teach a student. She dances hula. She goes to Hawaii every year to to do her per performances. Oh yeah, I mean yeah. that's the thing people don't know about uh, Japan, let alone Tokyo. You can find like a hula group, or we say hello, like almost in every city that you right. go to. In Japan. Every right. every single culture center that I've worked at with right. in Tokyo right, 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 has right. a hula group. Yeah. And it's taught by a variety of, you know, younger, older people. Like, But it'd be, right. yeah. it be middle-aged women in their hula and their asses off. And it, ma it makes sense, like, that love, because, I mean, if you've been to Hawaii, the the, the Japanese language there, it, it's like Spanish is in California oh, absolutely. Or, or Arizona. Yeah. Like, I mean, they're so influenced by that Hawaiian culture, Yeah, you know, going out there, bringing that back here. So um, it, it's surprising to, to hear those figures but at the same time it's you can not, imagine right it, I can, I can it, see it, it makes it's, sense yeah it's 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 not a bad thing yeah i, I didn't uh, even no, question it he gave yeah. us a bunch of facts it's all respect like, it's all love yeah. true absolutely like we didn't fact check at all we don't do that cultural here. appropriation I just, I just believe it <laughs> no, <it's love. laughs> but <laughs> no but there is there is that and so you just saw that there was like space for it and then you yeah so i was invited um by one of like a big promoters out here she's like you know so what people don't know is like hula is kind of um, geared more towards older Japanese women. So like the the general hula dancer is like from like 50 up right. in Japan. Because it's slower. It's Japan. slower, right? Well, um, at least what they do it, is slower. Right. Okay, okay. And then what they saw with Tahitian dance, which is what a lot of people get confused with hula, which is the faster stuff and everything. They saw that it would reach a bigger demographic, which was mm. like basically every, everything under 50. Okay. You know? And so we were out here, it was already out here, but they wanted kind of someone who knew how to do it. And uh, that's when we got invited to come out here and 
just basically start up something bigger. And uh, it was like six years, definitely pre-COVID, that they um, thought, I mean, they tried to do the numbers and everything. And they were like, there's probably like 40 to 60,000 people here that do uh, Tahitian dance. So you're balling off of this shit. Oh, no. Hell no. <laughs> <laughs> you but, you're, but, but, like, um, but you're like one of the main, like you're an elite type of person. So like, like Brooklyn Terry in a way, right? Brooklyn Terry is, it, it, when it comes to house, right. like people that teach house know right. like the godfather. Like, yeah, they yeah, know yeah. he's like a champion. So you probably have Japan. that. He, he probably got right. that same type of similar status out here. Because when I told my my adult student, who was probably in her 50s, I was like, yeah, I got, a, I got a homie. And he's like, I was like, I was surprised. Like, look at all these Instagram numbers he has. And she's like, she looked him up. and She's like, wow, he's really famous. And I was like, let me see that. Right. And then she was like, yeah. But, but you know, she she was she was saying it, it was like impressive and shit. Plus Shout she out to saw Brooklyn you. Terry, the Mavina of house dance. Oh, man. <laughs> if shout only, out, if shout only. out to the Mavina <laughs> house dance, Brooklyn <laughs> Terry. Oh. No, thanks, man. It's uh, it, it it's definitely been a long journey, and like even teaching here in Japan has been like, it, it's been crazy in itself. It's like a totally like you know you can have all these accolades and everything coming from overseas and then coming here, and it's like you gotta relearn how to teach and how to communicate yeah. with people, you know. So, um, with Tahitian dance, like going back to like the history and everything. Uh, is that cool? We go to the history. Yeah, part? let's go. Yes. All right, tell us. So, Educate me on it because I don't. I don't really know. Ori Tahiti. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> yeah. I told you. Rory, I, Rory I told you. I, I I went to high school in Hawaii, so I kind of got you know. I, I know a little bit more about, um, you know, the Japanese culture. I, I everything I learned about Japan kind of was when I was in Hawaii. It was like I go to my homie's house and his mom speaks Japanese. She don't speak English and shit. And it's like, yeah. oh, okay, word. And, and all that kind of. Um, salad bowl of cultures that they have out there the chinese the japanese the the hawaiians oh, yeah. the white folks and and the whole variety of people was it was a culture shock to me because and it's I like deeply that you cultural used, i like that you use salad bowl as a pull, as opposed to like melting, melting pot, pot yeah. because i don't agree with that melting yeah, pot yeah. you know then we all lose ourselves in right. that you the, know and that's a that's a beautiful thing about hawaii is it somehow it maintains like this different cultural like integrity throughout a variety of different kind of ethnic groups and uh, and indigenous populations right it's know? like everyone has their own place in it you know and um everyone is recognized but then there's also that other side where like everyone if you're born and raised in hawaii which i was not and we can talk about that later it's like they all know their difference but like everyone speaks pigeon sure even if you're like if you're if you're like really from hawaii right. you know you can be a total like holy like white person or even a black person or whatever and yeah, well <laughs> you know the <laughs> thing is like when i was out there i i was i spoke hella pigeon yeah and it, I, it didn't disappear until about four years into coming back to the states mm -hmm. people would be like yo he said he talks weird but i would only sprinkle it in and now i can't do it at all unless i'm talking to a homie and then it just comes right back right it's a it's a different sense of like uh, I, can't, I can never say the word inclusivity you know what i mean and like hawaii you killed that dog that was it <laughs> that was the actual word right couldn't have said it better yeah. hawaii is a, it's it, it's a it's a beast of its own because uh it's like i mean you can talk to certain ethnic groups and they'll be like oh well they're racist towards us and things like that but i find that hilarious Right, I find that hilarious. Yeah, it just depends where you go, and you know, it's a very Hawaiian thing. To, of course, to not you be usually, racist, you only hear about it from like white neoliberal people, like white liberal peoples who go there and like, oh, they were. Oh no, but old. even even now other I know what it feels too. like to be black. Oh, it's like, ah, yeah, <laughs> don't work. go to the North Shore. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah, yeah, exactly. Nine. And I think they're not. They were never like politically correct. It's like it's 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 so much like you know, I love you, so I'm going to make fun of you. You know what I mean? Like, come on, well, we're, you're you're my you're my brother, or like you know you're you're my neighbor. I fought a lot when I was out there. I fought a lot, and a lot of the people that I fought became good friends of mine. And, and it you was know, just a part of the culture. That is the culture. Yeah, yeah. that is the. Culture. I love I love Hawaii. I just I just can't imagine living there because of prices. But oh, yeah, we man, actually we crazy. actually went to a, a a tangent about Hawaii that we don't have to go all the yeah, way down. We don't, but, yeah. but tell us tell us more about the history. Uh, of the dance that you teach and also the history of your family and how you got into it. Okay, so um, my 
my background is Wait, I'm time out time out check out my new hawaii dunks that i deconstructed <laughs> you know what i mean they used to be all blue look at that rory i cut oh, all it out you feel shit. me look at that green wasn't there before pay attention uh i'm a uh, yeah sneakerheads. that's uh, a size uh what is that a size these are tens these are size yeah, 10 you're gonna tens. find them on stock x tomorrow yeah <laughs> you know what i mean but yeah i just oh I just those are dope I just deconstructed these. Roy, it used to be all As blue. As seen on out. the Mega Late Show, yeah. episode 148. Yeah, thank you for paying attention to that. I want to put them on the table because we rocking real fucking- Some island culture. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Got my new business cards too. You know I know, yeah, I was checking yeah, these out. Yeah, these are yeah, dope. Yeah, right. Checking out where uh, cultural so, yeah, ambassador. The, Go ahead. I'm sorry, doc. Oh, no, it's all good. This uh, is we're, we're like I know we're being serious about the culture and everything, and we want to do it. We, we want to do your family, you know. I mean, justice and right, talk right. about all the dope things. But we're also drinking, have a good time. Today yeah, too, we're just vibing I mean? right so, now. Right. Yeah, and yeah, I don't yeah. think anyone would be upset if we just go off on tangents or yeah. whatever and talk about how dope these are, you know. So. <laughs> but, but speaking of how dope things are, I want to hear how dope your ancestors are and the dance that they created and how it. Oh led yeah. To you. So. <laughs> That's why you're here, Rory. Thank you. Yes. That's why you're here. Bring Keep it back. us on track. But uh, yeah, so my background is I'm Polynesian. Now, Polynesian means a lot of different things. But um, we're, we're a whole bunch of people. And uh, my background specifically is I'm Samoan and Hawaiian. But I specialize in Tahitian dance. So my great-grandparents uh, immigrated to the mainland. My great-grandfather was from American Samoa. And my great grandmother was actually Hawaiian Ainu, the Japanese, and um, they were both entertainers back in the day. That's a fire mix. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. That's a yeah. fire mix. Yeah, and I have a, a story about that if we can get into it later. But uh, so they back in like the 1920s and 30s, Hawaiian music was like fire mm. you know what i mean like everyone was getting into that that falsetto right, stuff right. and it was like the golden era of hawaiian music for for america yeah and so um they were invited to go to uh the america's world world's fair which was like in new york back in 1920s and 30s and so they came over my great grandfather was a bass hawaiian bass musician my great grandmother was a hawaiian dancer kind of like show dancer so did all the da- um, all the islands and then um, they stayed there for a little bit. And then my grandfather was the first Hawaiian born in New York. What? Yeah, Wait, who the, should, the first what? straight up Hawaiian. Yeah, someone of New Hawaiian, York, Polynesian. I think wow. Hawaiian. But uh, yo, that's pretty dope. Yeah, and someone that's check those facts. Super dope. But yeah, he was born there. We don't check facts here, that but some yeah. Street cred. Like that's before Nas's dad moved to New York. Right. So like, <laughs> yeah. You're more, you're, you're more New York. I mean, than that's Nas, like yeah. Yo. A wow. Jay Z Hawaiian Sophie fame, right. like it don't. It starts with your with your grandpa. Yeah, was, yeah, that's incredible. East Coast. And uh, they all they kind of did like a big um, exodus over there with a lot of the entertainers during that day and whatnot. And then uh, after the World's Fair, now like Hawaiian music and then like Polynesian dance and everything got big and like the movies and everything. So then they moved to Hollywood. They moved to the West Coast, and so uh, they were doing all that for for a, wh- a while. And then um, my grandmother moved from American Samoa to Hawaii and then moved to the mainland to, to dance. And she started working for my great grandfather, met my, met, met my grandfather. And then she was like, well, you know what? We should start um, a group. And this was back in uh, 1965, like so many years later. And then it kind of like blew up. And then after my mom took charge and then uh, Polynesian dance was really big. Yeah, and everyone was confused. Like, is it hula? Is it Tahitian? Is it the haka? Is it the fire knife dancing? But it was kind of all those things. We were trying to promote mm-hmm. our Polynesian culture to, to, uh, to America. Y'all was like the original Polynesian cultural center and shit, right? You go yeah. in there and, it's and like, in fact, wow. yeah, Polynesian cultural center is um, a lot of our family was involved in creating that. Word. Yeah, because that's that's the whole area that my family's from. No in shit. So after that, um. For me, I now, of course, it was my mom, and then she met my dad. My dad was a fire knife dancer, you know, we all met through the business. And then, uh, I really didn't, it was something I always did. I was very mm-hmm. proud of my culture, 
but it wasn't what I thought I was going to do. You thought you were going to play football? No, hell no. I mean, you Samoan. I thought that was like a thing that y'all did. I went. I went to. I grew <laughs> up in Orange County. Come you on, know what man. Mean? No, no yeah. there's a disproportionate amount of Samoans in the NFL. Like, oh no, yeah, it's, it's hugely the odds out, like, of a Samoan crazy. getting yeah. into the NFL is. I mean, if, if you want to throw the stereotype, it's cool. I, I mean, I love to throw maybe, the stereotype. No, you were going to be a professional it, bowler, rapper. You were like, he's like, yeah, I'm here to rap, but. But you know what's you know what's funny, uh, the high school I went to. So I grew up in Orange County. Uh, I was born and raised in Anaheim, and uh, damn, the high school that I went to shout was out to number Disneyland. one. Yeah, that's why. Oh, shout Anaheim, out to Disneyland, yeah. Which I actually worked at for many years. He was doing like like both Polynesian Anaheim and in Tokyo. Oh, yeah, sick hell damn, yeah. Damn dog, yeah. you're fucking killing it. Yo. Get your and, thighs uh, all out and everything. Oh no, no no, I was I was just a musician over there. Oh, Didn't okay. have any male dancers. Oh, that's shameful. But what, what, shit, what was I saying? I'm sorry, dude. No, I think I had too many too beers. Too many beers? Hey. Oh, no, no. Yeah, so. Oh, I don't have any gunshots. Everyone thought not... I was going to be. Pew, 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 pew. Mm. That, that was the weakest uh, fucking gunshot ever. Yeah? But, that uh, was pretty weak. The high school I went to. That's actually pretty hard. <laughs> was uh, We were number one in the nation for football. Mm. Uh, Los Alamitos High School. Shout out Griffins. Go Griffins. Mm. And uh, the only Samoans there were the ones that played football. Now, it was kind of like a magnet school. I, I got into that high school because it was the Orange County High School of the Arts. So I know you guys think I'm lying, but I, was, I got into that school because I was a musical theater major. Oh. That, well, I mean, I believe was, it. Uh, like, you, like you're, if you go to, to Nono Cena on Spotify, you got tens of thousands of listens. Yeah, thanks, man. A month. That, that was That's my passion. Because I always grew up dancing, you know, like fifth generation, fourth generation. These in things. fact, in fact, the majority, if you type your name into into YouTube, the majority of the videos are musical. Yeah. Would yeah, you yeah. say that you're a musician first or a dancer first? It's, it's one and the same. Oh, yeah. I think just the actual dancing me as a dancer. Um, my la last time I really like danced competitively was like 15 years ago. You know, I'm going to be 42 mm. in two months. Hey, uh, shout out to aging, dog. Hey. Yeah. And so I my, just turned 38 like a couple the day you know, my birthday is the day after Angelique. Yeah, no, it's all about the 40s, right? You're yeah. about yeah. to turn 42. I'm 43. We're yeah, on episode 38, 148, 148, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So Yeah, we're drinking a 40 ounce amount of alcoholic beverages. Yeah, probably. Roy, where are you drinking? That's nowhere near a 40. You want a, you want a beer down here? Or yeah. a highball? You got a highball. Yeah. Today's podcast sponsored by, sponsored by Suntory. Suntory for ball. relaxing time. Make yeah. it Suntory time. And so <laughs> I'm, I keep on losing train of thought. I forget where we're at too, but no, you're talking about like your oh, high yeah, school. Oh yeah, musical theater. Shit. Yeah. Right, so yeah, yeah. that was like my thing. And it, it, it plays a big role in like my, my style of Ponyji dance later. So um, I grew up doing, I was in band. Um, I was a uh, crazy, like I was all into drums and everything, but uh my biggest my my passion was I know it sounds weird but it was like musical theater man I loved it I you thought wanted that to I was in like the Booya tribe and shit no you didn't want to be in Booya tribe them. you I know what the guys in Booya no, tribe yeah no not oh, the guy but okay. like but all their you dancers them, right? yeah you know when they like they all dance for our family's group no shit so check this shout out shout out to the Booya tribe <laughs> shout out Booya tribe yeah oh they just had homie that passed away last year I yeah. think. I forget yeah, no, his he, name. He but passed away recently. Two, two um, years ago? A year ago? No, he no, he passed away this year. Oh, okay, man. That's unfortunate, but rest in peace. Yeah, right. they were definite pioneers. Yeah, so so the dance itself wasn't your passion, but just being from the family, right. like as a child, like were you required to learn it? Did they make you practice it? No, my you parents know, never. That up? It's just I grew up I grew up in our you dance in studio. It. Okay. And I was like, you know, this is great and everything, but I I don't my passion was really like acting and especially singing and and doing all these things musical theater so i got into this really prestigious high school for musical theater and uh i was like you know punishing dance yeah that's that's all part of me but i want to do this and uh there's a lot of famous people that went to my my high school doing musical theater and i was like i started doing it in ninth grade i was all into it 10th grade you know start messing around whatever but then I realized there was like no rules for me, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, and and this is on the Fire and Knife uh, podcast. Shout out to that that brother who did that podcast. He had a great interview with you. And and if anybody Rex. is more interested Rose in hearing Rex, kind of 
uh, more details about all the work that Mavina's done. That guy is just, he knew what he was talking about. Like, really, it's a good podcast. So I advise you guys to go listen to that Fire uh, fire Knife podcast. I think that's exactly what it's called, right? The Fire Knife podcast? Yeah, the Fire Knife podcast. And, and, it, and it's great. But one of the things that you, and, and what I feel like you're getting at right now, and one of the things you touched on in that episode, was that what you've done within this traditional culture right this deeply traditional culture with all rules and expectations is you have pushed the boundaries of it you have innovated in ways that may have been intentional but oh, intentional or not mm-hmm. you have caused tremendous ripples throughout the community in this long tenure of 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 you know doing the dance and making the music he made it seem as though like you pushed them to change and that you've caused a lot of different approaches to the music that may have been met with adversity at first because you're not even really living on the islands right you're coming from the states but can you can you give yourself props really quick for being an innovator or is that a tacky thing to do Mm, in our culture you don't give yourself props can we Mm. give you the props and and you just tell us why you don't deserve the props because you only did this and that will in fact show why you deserve the props that we're offering you Mm. (laughs) so i mean without without saying it though you think that 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 accusation is kind of correct that that you you've done things within the culture that some people have seen as innovation and some people have seen as like a oh definitely radically changing it in ways that are not positive right Yes, yeah, definitely, yeah. for sure. I think that, I, and again, going back to my background, I'm Samoan and Hawaiian. I'm not Tahitian. But uh, after high school, I, I basically ran away from home. I lived in Tahiti. I kind of grew up there from like 17 to like almost 30 years old, you know? Oh, shit. Yeah. And so what I was trying to do with Tahitian dance is, Tahitian dance is very, back in those days, was very just Tahiti. And then everyone outside of Tahiti was doing like fake shit. Like, not really fake shit, but, like, everyone was being like, oh, well, we'll just do like this. And it was like, you know, they didn't really know. And it's not everyone. There was a lot of great dancers back then, but people didn't know the history of it. So my goal was, how am I going to take my musical theater training and telling a story and putting the music, but how am I going to translate this to an audience that has no idea of what we're talking about and this is besides like a cheesy luau or something like that Mm -hmm. so how can i kind of combine those two worlds and i think that's that's how i got to where i am now you know i'm I'm not giving myself props or anything but there's the tahitian dance world in tahiti there's the international dance world of tahitian dance and what i try to do is connect the two and basically tell stories so that people not from Tahiti, like basically you guys can look at something we do and you'd be like, Oh word. I, I, I get what they're trying to say. And Oh yeah, that's dope. You know? And then I can find a piece of me right. in that within the music or how we're trying to do the costuming and um, even the choreography, because I, I am from California, you know, I was born and raised, mm-hmm. but then also at the same time, and you're walking a really fine line not taking anything away from the culture that's the hard part i mean you come from a family who's been doing it for so long so you must be well versed in the foundation in mm. the history of this right. culture right, right. so you know the line to walk right and speaking mm, yeah. of brooklyn terry brooklyn terry says learn learn the foundation and then you know forget it you know what i mean right a, a right. study i i, I don't want to fuck up his quote but it's basically saying learn from the people before you learn the history right. learn the culture and then put your own mark on it in a way that doesn't fucking bastardize the the there tradition you, go. you know what i mean i that think doesn't there's a way fuck up the tradition to it of, yeah that yeah, contributes to it right? exactly there has to be a way where you can learn it and be so well versed in it that it's just something just innate in you yeah. And then you can contribute to it. Sure. Because, I mean, you, you want to contribute, and I feel like you want to make some kind of change. Because, I mean, if you're just doing the exact same thing, you're not really innovating. I mean, you're, you're honoring and, and you're doing everything in the you know the exact same perfect way that everybody before you did it. But if, you, if, if that's all you're doing, are you really contributing in any way other than carrying it on? Or are you, you know, do, do you have to kind of offer your own... I mean, forgive the hip hop word, but your own flavor, your own right. kind of style, oh, yeah. your, your own input to 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 something as you progress. I mean, here we're talking about uh, Tahitian dance, but yeah. I mean, in in any it, kind of you know same. cultural yeah. type exactly. of activity. 
And that's the thing. I think people claim to know the roots and history and everything. And they're, they're going to be like, well, now let me contribute. But they're like totally stepping on the tradition and everything. And they never really learned it. Can you speak? Can you speak the language? Yeah, and I can read speak, it and all uh, that type of shit. Well, it's, it's funny because living in Tahiti, there's two languages. There's French and there's Tahitian. So everyday language, especially because I live in That's why he city. could freak it with the French earlier. I didn't even think yeah, of that. Yeah, so right. was French and um, Tahitian, Tahitian language. Um, I, I, I know Tahitian better than I do my own language, Samoan. I know Samoan pretty well. All the different Polynesian languages are related but are different. So I can kind of understand. So all is them. it kind of like, like um, I don't know, like a Filipino dialect where you can kind of pick up on it, but it's a different dialect. Close, but it's not a dialect. They're like separate languages. Separate like for languages. instance, in in Hawaii they say aloha, in Samoa we say talofa, in Tahiti they say yaurana, and in uh, oh, yeah, that's New Zealand they say kiaora. Right? Kia, you know, huh. so, but so we have similar words. So like from. It's, it's the European in the group here. <laughs> is that like, I mean, uh, you know, like uh, like French, Spanish, Italian, mm -hmm. Portuguese, huh. like definitively separate languages, right. but very clearly the same roots where, yeah, I mean, if you speak Portuguese, there's a good chance you can speak up. You can pick up a lot of Spanish even right. if you can't yeah. speak everything. So. Yeah. Okay. All right. It's the same roots. Exactly. I, I always got the white people's huh. perspective. That's why they bring me <laughs> I here, mean, so. that's, you know, I can't get it. Shout like, out to I, all the know. white viewers here. You know, we got we, you. I mean, we've got several and I want to give a shout out to Roy all, for, all three, for four of you. Well, I want to give a shout out to Roy for, for helping us out with that understanding in, in the, a very sincere way. But, oh, no, absolutely. Yeah. I, I'm curious. Now, you've been, you've been, you know, obviously, you're you're um, an important person to the culture, and this is uh, when it comes to subcultures. Uh, a lot of people are very protectionist about it. Like, who can get the information? Who's allowed to teach? Who's allowed right. to do things? Yeah. Like, what is allowed to change? Why does that person have the ability to do so? And a lot of them might be concerned about you introducing this to like. Japanese people who are learning the dance but not necessarily not the history question, yeah. is is there something is there something uh that comes with that in teaching Japanese people that that is kind of not not like a roadblock but something on your mind when you're teaching a culture a very meaningful aspect of your generational history right. and your people's history is there is there something that is kind of there that's just like yo you guys just want to do it for the dance but you should also understand it for the history man we run into that roadblock all the time did i did i state that question yeah. right oh, no, absolutely perfect. i feel like Very i'm well getting said. there off of these you know what i mean <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but, but i think yeah. i was already there before yeah. we even started <laughs> bet i like that but but yeah like is there yeah. what what is the you know you, you're teaching you're teaching uh, uh, uh japanese people who are it's a homogenous insular culture right. who has an appreciation for things outside of their culture but usually in a kind of fetishized form where they kind of like mm. see it as an object That's instead so of well something put, that yeah. instead of something that is you know right um meaningful right i can i can see um yeah i deal with that a lot i think that when someone comes into our group we let them know that if you're here just to put on the costume and look like kawaii or something like that this is not the group for you we're here to do culture first mm. and foremost and then um if you're looking to be like you want to be a star or things like that because it it just so happens that like we have the the most um amount of winning soloists and we're the only group from japan that's won international competitions um if you're here just to be a part of that or just to be like a winner or something and not know the culture at all, don't come join our group, you know? Mm. And there's people that are like, oh, you know, I want to know about culture and things like that. And then after just turn around and just like shit all over you and be like, oh, yeah, you know, uh, I know everything now and I'm going to go start my own group and things like that. I And I actually, I actually do have a teacher's class where I'm like, Hey, if you guys want to act, be actual teachers, then you should know the culture and know the basics and what this is all about and things like that. So, it it so is. You teach really, them little shit like language. You teach them like the history. Everything. Of yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, That's from like A to Z. And, and there's not a lot of sources to learn it because I, I looked for the books. They're not there. It. You got to find the people that know this shit. Right. And, you know, that's that's the good thing, and then that's the bad thing as well. True. You know, if you're just a person like, hey, I want to know Tahitian dance. I'm going to look it up on the internet. I'm not going to learn from someone who actually knows. Good luck. A lot a lot of these cultures, it, it comes from, like, a rich oral tradition as well. There's a, not a yes. lot of, like, you, my, you know, um, my father is a black seminal, or he was a black seminal. And all of our history was not something that was written down and passed down in volumes right. it was things were passed down verbally and so when you're when the people get decimated a lot of the history is gone so it takes a lot to find that out and to archive that and get that type of information so it's super important that it gets passed down in the right way um and by people who are qualified to do so oh absolutely i mean that's that's the whole reason why the dance was invented was to tell our stories, was to tell our genealogy, was to tell who we were. That's how we passed down our stories was mm. through the dance and the music itself. That's Absolutely. that's you know, that that was our books. So so, yeah. so so out of the network, so so we know here in here in Japan, here in the Asia Pacific, we have we have you, we have your family and, and all of the things you're doing. Is is that same movement of, of for this culture happening? in europe in america in south america in, yeah. in other places yeah for tahitian dance yes you know it's funny it's huge it's uh wow. okay uh it's funny the central hubs for tahitian dance now before it was just tahiti hawaii and like california because it was like that overflow from hawaii hey. you know but now the international world is like um you all u.s Mexico is like killing it right now. South America is still newer. Um, Japan now we're 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 way up there now, and Europe, especially oh, France, shit. because of all of the French, yeah, Polynesian, right, 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 yes. right, right. Spain, Italy. That's ill, dog. Well, yeah, we're we're participating in this competition um, that's gonna go on YouTube in the beginning of June. What? There's competitors from all around the world. Yeah. Yeah, that's ill, dog. The world championships, um, and which we've won both in the <laughs> Otea, like the see, the, I, don't the I don't got the four hundred four, I don't got the bomb drops. <laughs> do, 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 do. First time Japan ever won yeah. in the yeah. world championships. Yeah, congratulations in man. all categories. Well, you know, I, I, I feel <laughs> I feel like that it would be impossible for Rory and I to truly give you the props because we lack the context of how meaningful your contributions to this culture are. Oh, but yeah, we, we've no, got a little bit of the sprinklings of it. And I just want to say that, like, man, it's a real, it, it, it's really inspirational and it's a real honor to be with somebody who is championing their culture and spreading it in, 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 a, in a very meaningful and proper way. Because you don't get a lot of that. Yeah, you know, I was I was telling my wife today about how excited I was to have you on because, number one, I have a lot of respect and adoration for um, the Polynesian people and and basically any culture who has been colonized through you know imperialism or mm -hmm. British colonialization, French you know, um, and 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 that's a big thing about Hawaii you know with the sovereign they, there's people who are all for sovereignty there that I didn't realize when I was younger. But my homie Steez, who started this podcast with me, right. he's from Guam. And he yeah. is all for the sovereignty Tomorrow. of Guam. Yeah. yeah, he's all from the for the sovereignty. And so that's really dope. My wife is Okinawan. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Okinawa were their own, you know, ethnic group of people their before they were, you know, colonized before and imperialized by Japan. Japanese, yeah. And they, they look different and they have their own cultural traditions that are different and my wife was like wow that's when when we were looking at your video she's like that's dope and it re-inspired her because my wife used to do okinawan style uh dancing since she was a kid she's on tv and doing shit mm -hmm. she can play the sanshin the and and Sick. her family also performed the taiko drumming they're hella okinawan yeah and proud to be so and usually when you talk to a, a okinawan person if you're like yo you're japanese right they're like no. calm down yeah B. right I'm Okinawan. Preserve that cultural right. heritage, and so I love to Hi, see Sai. that you are. A, I, I love to see that you are a person that that is doing that, man. And I think it's really beautiful. And to hear about the success you're having out here is dope as fuck. It, it really it, is. It really it's did get me. Watch. I thought what you was doing was cool off of just me meeting you and shit. I was like, oh, that sounds dope. We teach a I thought maybe you taught a little class or something. You know, you were able to live your life doing teaching a couple classes. But 
the magnitude in which you're 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 working out here is dope dog shout out to you yeah shout out to you oh thank you very much but but, i I, oh go ahead ask a question yeah well i i guess the next question is i mean all the props that that we have for uh, i mean mavina you your family what you're doing now what comes next so you said you're the 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 fourth you're the you're the fifth generation doing this um i mean at this point now you're you're here in the asia pacific What's next? What what happens with the sixth generation, the seventh generation? Where does that come from? Does that come? Oh, I mean, directly from blood? Are does your that girls... come from the people that you teach? Does that come, you know, from from your own kids? Are there expectations on them? Cloning um, technology, <laughs> right? You know, it's funny because, um, yeah, both my daughters live here. My son lives in Tahiti. It's uh, all th- uh, my son is all about judo. He's like, you know, he's like, oh, judoka, yeah, yeah, and he's like living in Tahiti, born and raised there, and you know, I'm like, son, you don't want to start dancing? He's like, oh, you know, but I love, I would judo love to, but I gotta Osato Gari right. this guy yeah, later exactly. today. Right. Right. That's his whole world, you know. And same with my daughters; they're Why starting he come to get to Japan. Into I mean, this oh, no, is the mecca. Come, he comes the, and visits. Okay, you know, I mean, the Kotokan is right down the street. That I is, know, man. that is the mecca of judo. Yeah, it's right. Over there, you but know you know what I mean? what's funny. Even if you lived here, you'd be like, "Oh, well, you know, that's right there." Like, take it for granted. Mm. And it was the same like me, like with Polynesian dancing. I was born and raised in the dance studio, like sitting there, like just watching the dancers all day. I'm like, "Oh my god, when is this gonna be over?" But like, you never know. You know my parents didn't force me. You never know until it like hits or it clicks. And if right, my right. kids are gonna do it, they're gonna do it. But I think the future of it, and because of now we live in the age of internet and whatever, is. Maybe if it's not my kids or whatever, it's just for people to have this general understanding that it's it's beyond just the aesthetic of mm. looking good and dancing in the grass skirts or you know. You know there's right? a lot more stories being told in ways that are just like beautiful right? about these things. Right. Like fucking Moana was ill. You know what it I mean? Was, like, yeah. It wasn't I mean, it wasn't like like you as know, a matter of fact. As a matter of fact. We've heard some stories about Oh yeah, the, so the folks that were involved in yeah, that movie. so uh, Moana, um, great movie. My sister was part of the Pacific Trust that did the whole movie. No shit. Yeah, and she choreographed the whole movie. If it's and Disney, everything. I no know it. If it's shit. Disney and my yeah. friends, I definitely know it. <laughs> Is that right? She yeah. she was part of the trust. See, yeah, and that was a beautiful telling of these deeply traditional and important stories. Right. I watched. I watched. What is it called? Coco. Right, I think oh, the man. Japanese yeah. one is "Remember Me." I was crying at the end of that a thing, Doc. Movie. Uh, it was yeah. beautiful. It no, was I, beautiful. I related Doc. to Coco more than uh, Moana. Said no, more but than I mean, Moana. but the thing about it was like, it, like I grew up in Southern California. You right. know, there's so much Mexican culture, and I just got used to certain. You know, I just seeing it. You like, could relate to all those things because, yeah. like, even though we you know right. we're not Mexican, but like. We grew up around I, all that. I grew stuff. up. I grew up seeing people in that culture who, like, it was their day to day lives, but there was Absolutely. a beauty to it. You know what I mean? There was. It is a culture of people, and I was at the swap meet in Oceanside every right. single weekend. Oh, and just like Oceanside, that's where I grew up in Oceanside. Man, I grew right? up in the barrio in Anaheim. Like yeah. I know everyone thinks OC is like you know like the OC, but nah, man. I grew up like. It was straight up. It was hard. Yeah, you know? I mean, we were in occupied Mexico. Yeah. It's basically, we were at. We were yep. in occupied Mexico. And it was just, it's beautiful to see those type of things. I love, I love yeah. to see it. Be- before we get out of here, I did want to like talk to you more about your music production. Can you tell us a little bit about your music career? Because I, I hear that like Nono Cena has been this long running yeah. musical group. Mm-hmm. What is, can you explain to me what well, that Nono is? Well, Nono Cena was um, the group that my grandmother started. So this has been going on for like 60 years then. Yeah. And it was a dance group. But then what I try to do is, again, bring in my my whole um, um, music um, experience and everything. I try to take, just like with the dance, take the traditional songs and kind of flip them up or tell our stories in a different way. I think that's the future. Uh, responding to Rory's question is, what is the future of dance and like sharing our culture? It's It's... I think sharing our stories in a new way that people can understand that's right, not right. just for this certain demographic or these people. It's like you can watch it and get it, you know, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and you can relate with it. Sure. And so that's that's what I try to do with my music. And like people are like, well, you're a Polynesian artist, so you're just this genre. I'm like, no, man, I can do Polynesian music, but like 
I have like a lot of EDM tracks. I have like straight up traditional tracks. Right. I have a country track. Where, where can we? Where, let me play something. Should I all play right. something from Nono Sino or like? That's so. That's all my old stuff. Let me old see. Shit? Just go. I, I don't to, know if like YouTube. Let me see. What was that on Spotify? That was Spotify. Yeah. yeah. You just yeah. type in my name. Okay. Okay. Let me do that. All the beats on this episode are brought to you by my man Soul Dope ninety five from the Inland Empire, one of my favorite producers right now, and I use him quite often. This is you, yeah? Yeah. So I have like already the top three is like EDM, oh, reggae, no uh, EDM. This one is like okay, so that one's kind of like a mix of everything. Okay. Here we go. It's a traditional chant that I rewrote, but va -a. trying to do it. Yeah, va'a means the canoe. Uh, you know? Okay. And just bring in traditional elements. With like all these different things. They should got sixty five thousand plays. You you want to freestyle over this, Rory? Let's go. Mm. And I recorded this in my apartment in Urayasu, Nazebe in Chiba. You got a really beautiful voice too, dog. You got a great voice for singing, actually, man. Yeah. I used to listen to like Alfred Apaka and all a bunch of Hawaiian oh, yeah, yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah, Hell yeah, 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 dog. Sampling them. That's those Goodwill right. records. The first album I made was a Hawaiian album. Really? <laughs> it was called 19.5 about the, uh, the Mauna Kea in uh, hyperdimensional physics. Oh, damn. See, this sounds progressive. This doesn't sound like traditional but it has right. all the markings so the, of uh the melody the is traditional and i have those traditional drums but then i'm putting in like other layers into it you know right. i mean the the color palette is is accurate you know it's Bringing accurate to what to make it evolve right like, right you, you can sense the roots you can sense where this came from yeah but it's clearly like modern built for now yeah. right and you say, i mean you say you were living in urayasu i know exactly where that is and what that's close to and that's why I have like kind of a sense of, mm. of, of feeling as if I'm if I'm at that place that is right near Urayasu. Disneyland. We're talking about Disneyland, yeah, oh, yeah. Of course. I mean, I grew up like ten minutes from this the, the original, the OG Disneyland. Hell yeah. You know? I've only been to, I've been to the OG Disneyland like three times. So check it out. My grandmother danced at the grand opening of Disneyland. Wow. But both my parents worked at Disneyland. Um, and then I worked at Disney California and also was, I'm not supposed to say it, but it doesn't matter. I was the cultural advisor, um, and choreographer for the show here and Nupua too danced. Right, there. right. Shout out to Nupua. Yeah. So we're going to do generate, we're Enough. big time Disney fans, like hundred percent. Okay. You really freak it here. So it's just here taking on here a whole, cause yeah. it's a traditional, the words are a traditional prayer before you go out on the canoe. And I'm trying to take you on that journey, but then I made the melody and. Uh, well, I mean, this sounds this sounds like it could have been in Moana. You know exactly. what I mean? It starts off with that, yeah. So then, why didn't they put my music in? No, I was like, yeah. Why didn't they? Walt. <laughs> the music from Moana was right. dope, though. No, it was great. It was a great film. Yeah. Man. It's got to be one of my favorite Disney films. Not that I watch a lot, but I mean, it was up. Is it Disney or Pixar? I, I, I do watch a lot. It's Disney. It's Disney Same shit, right? It is one of my favorite. I mean, yeah. of the modern Disney films, it, oh, yeah. it is one of the best. I like The Rock. I like Dwayne Johnson, right? man. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm I've a worked fan. with him a couple yeah? times. It's Dang. just their depiction of Maui, um, I did not like. That's the only thing I did. Is that right? Yeah. What, well, like, in what way was it? Because, like, Maui is our ancestor. You know what I mean? Like, he right. wasn't. He's kind of a. It like was a he wasn't like this buffoon of a, a character, bit, yeah. yeah, you know. And in fact, if you watch our video, we actually did a whole presentation about this. That was our whole theme about who Maui was to us. Mm -hmm, the whole mm -hmm. character Moana and everything and everything else is pretty spot on. But the idea of Maui being this idiot is is, right. is that story no. supposed to be accurate though? Is Moana an actual cultural figure within? No, no, no. it's okay. But like the. I think that the different influences to create that character were very spot on. Okay, yeah, right. that's ill, man. I um, I, I I don't know. Like, how long have we been recording? We've been recording we're, for almost yeah, an we're, hour. We're, we're, we're a little over an hour. Yeah, we're we're um, yeah. I, I, it looks like I got about fifty-two so. minutes on there. Let me before before um, 
You know, and Mavina, I consider us friends, man. We, are, I, I would, I know that it's difficult to get you in here to record, but I would like to have you back again to to host and to kick it. Maybe even get my yeah, my sorry, tomorrow man, buddy Steve's and like different tangents. No, this is exactly right, right. this is what I wanted to hear, and we That's you are the guest of this in the focus the of this episode, about, and we man, we got right? I think we got a lot when of. When have we ever stayed directly on the exact course that exactly. we were supposed to? I think right? That's what makes it exactly. interesting, right? Exactly. It ain't I, the mega on time show. It's the mega late show. Tell them, Rory. You know, we tell get em. where we go, and then we show up tell at the em, end. Tell them, right? You know, um, I do want to give a shout out since this is a hip hop podcast. I do want to give a shout out to um, my man Curbside Jones and Dexter Fizz. They just released an album called The Last Train in January. Um, both of these artists are from the states, and they wanted to to um, create this EP to fuel an international tour to Japan, which they've mm-hmm, traveled to mm-hmm. before. And um, because, of, because of Corona, they couldn't do it. But during that 2020, um, Curbside Joint and Dexter Fizz worked together with a bunch of Japanese artists out here, such as um, Laugh Life, Muma, Dharma, Ballhead, NF Zesso, and the homie Cram, who has been on the podcast. Beat makers out here and shit, right? And so they kind of did this collaborative album, which is a nice fusion of American style hip hop with some Japanese influences and also some Japanese emceeing. And I wanted to go ahead and um, I wanted to go ahead and play a track off of that and let you guys know that you can go um, buy this on um, curbsidejones.bandcamp.com. Let's see. Let me see what song we should play. Um, I've got No Wheels, First Train, Last Train. God, Nego 93 in Rainwater. Which one of these should we play? I, I wonder what last train because that applies very specifically to my life. <laughs> okay, tonight. right now? At Let's some play point. It. Oh shit. We all know that. Yeah. Yeah. The next station is Shibuya. Yeah, this is available on Bandcamp, man. Support local and independent art. I then came down. This is like a very um, Swisher House throw, right? She comes in station, heart racing, trying to be patient. Gotta let my mind go vacant, they're taking this journey, I'm facing out of slave to my job. Today, gotta get up and get out like on the land. The signal died and Google Maps stop. But I still find my way, yo. Sock with my bridge and take your light to the head. It's a wavy album, man. There's this, wait, my wait. favorite track on this is No Wills, and the Japanese MC fucking kills it for me so much. I'm a huge fan of that. He raps in uh, Japanese? Yeah. I'll play it a little bit after this. Actually, I'll play it right now. I keep on. This is the one up my go-to one that I be playing all the time. Hold on. I like this song a lot. Is your Japanese good enough to follow that, Rory? Uh, only the words, not not, <laughs> yeah. not the flow. I mean, yeah. the, the way hip hop works. I mean, right. all grammar, all structure is thrown out out the window, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, so, like with Japanese yeah. hip hop, I love it, respect it. I like when I can pick up the words, yeah. but. I, I mean, I, I can't pick up the meaning of half of the English right. hip hop that I listen right, to. Right, right. Like, oh, the <laughs> yeah, really you get nice. like I catch the motif. Cool, right? Here's yeah. a whiff. So let me yes, try to unpack that. I mean, that. when we talk yeah. about like half the independent hip hop, the yeah, reason yeah. is because I don't know what they're saying. Yeah, I, you know, I like so. that I don't know what they're saying. Sometimes I get to pull meaning out of it. With the Japanese, I'm not too good at it. In so particular it's a way. good segue back to what Mavina is doing out here, right? So the the, the American hip hop flowed over here. Japan, you know, took it. They respect it. They've taken it on their way. They've taken it in their own direction. You know, in, some people consider that good, bad, but they've kind of made it their own. And the folks that are doing it right respect where it came from, know that history. Yeah. 
maybe the same thing will happen with the dance that you're teaching over here. You know, the folks that really make a movement, you know, here in the Asia Pacific, they may do something different with it. They may take it in a slightly different direction, but they'll always have what you and those that came before you taught them to, yeah, to, to take it in that direction. Thank you. Yeah, that's exactly what we're trying to do. I got, I got one more one more like tangent that I would like to go off on. You also own several like Hawaiian restaurants. Like, what do you own? Like L and L's back in the states and shit. Did you mention yeah, to me so, that? Do yeah. you have like a couple of Hawaiian restaurants and shit? Yeah, my my dad created this thing called uh, Matiki um, mm-hmm. Island Barbecue. Specifically, it's Island Barbecue. It's like a, a like a, a mixed plate kind of, type of joint. No, so what my dad's goal was to try to do like is the in and out of Hawaiian barbecue places. Oh, so shit. don't put a million things on the menu. We're gonna specialize in beef ribs, short ribs, uh, top sirloin, and chicken. Huh? And what do you got? Like Just macaroni rice, salad, mac and salad. Rice. That's it. Why isn't that here in Japan yet? Doc? I know. Oh right? uh, well, you know why. <laughs> No, you know we used to have the L and L in uh, Shibuya, Shibuya, right? Yeah, but, but they closed it down. They opened the truck only, I think. Yeah, and it's not the same. Yeah, and now they have it in Enoshima, but um. Oh really? Yeah, they got they L&L have, in Enoshima? somewhere, mm-hmm. somewhere. That's kind of far there. for local yeah, moko. Yeah, too far. The local and, moko uh, out here don't be hitting right, dog. Nah. Uh, I don't like. I don't want my local moko to come with like a side salad. No, unless it's macaroni salad. Some you know of them I mean? are legit. Some of them are legit. You it's, know, it's very difficult to fuck it right, up. But right. yeah, I they mean, manage can, to do it sometimes. I mean, that whole word like authentic, uh, authentic locomoco here in Tokyo, it doesn't exist. Yeah, you know what I mean, they're always gonna have to put their own spin on it. It's never gonna be the same. Yeah. Like that's one of the. Th- I feel like maybe they're using two quality ingredients. Like I need my beef right? to be cheaper. <laughs> like yeah. you go to you go to L and L and it's like that patty looks like it's right. Like, grade d yeah beef you know what i mean but yeah. it, it hits and, yeah. and then that's what my dad tried to create is like all top grade meats mm. keep it simple keep it to what people like you know and uh yeah it's called matiki island barbecue matiki everyone's like oh what what does that mean in Polynesian? it's literally my whole family m mevina me and my dad are mevina a alisa my sister t tiana my other sister icky for ricky that's my mom's name matiki. yeah it's the, it's the word all right all, all about right. the acronyms when let's, you're back there we know where you gotta eat let's get it going dog yeah open we got it up here locations. first one in, right, first one in ikebukuro <laughs> first one right here in ikebukuro I'm telling you, Ike Bukuro is on the come up, man. Like a lot of people don't know that the, the, the properties, is, the property value is going up. Go. I'm uh, with it. Uh, hey, I want you to know that I'm a cultural here. ambassador for Ike Bukuro. Uh, here's my business cards right here to let you know. I, I I am also going to try to get this Hawaiian restaurant open up. Matiki coming to you soon, 2022. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah, unlikely, but we just we'll opened up in Las Vegas. Uh, hey, that's dope. Two months ago. Hey, congratulations, dog. Thank you, man. Um, I don't know. I don't really have much else to say other than the fact that I hope to have you back again, and I hope to, um, you know, more shares. No we doubt. didn't even get into hip hop talks. I remember the first night that I I met you, I was wearing like a Run the Jewel shirt, and he was like, "Yo," and I was like, "Yo," and it yeah, was like, yeah, 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 "You know what yeah. I mean?" Hey. So uh, we'll we'll get into that sometimes, man. Definitely. But, yeah. Next time we'll do the karaoke at my place. We'll we'll get through it all. Broadcast indeed, live. Indeed. Indeed. Broadcast live. Um, a couple questions. Uh, before we get out of here, Family Mart, Lawson, 7 Eleven, Mary Fuck Kill. Go. What was that last one? Mary Fuck Kill. Family Mart, 7 Eleven, Lawson's. Who do you marry? Who do you fuck? Who do you kill? Oh, shit. <laughs> I've been asked this in a long time. Hey, he was community. like, he thought it was a, is that yeah, daily was Yamazaki? Like, what did they do? Right. I know. Yeah. Uh, Mary Fuck Kill. Family Mart, 7 Eleven, Lawson's. Okay. Uh, Mary, Family Mart. Fuck like fuck like fuck them. No, no, like have a like oh, intercourse okay. with them. You know what I mean? Just like that's your girl uh, on the side. Lawson's um, kill Seven Eleven. Right? I I think I think Seven Eleven. That's my same. That's my same. Right? Ranking. It's the same thing. Seven Eleven has good food, but they I put my it. beers on the very bottom. So my my only the the only reason I would kill Seven Eleven is because. You gotta get the Let right Seven Eleven. Oh, okay, they, right? so they they do. They're some not sh- consistent. They They're do some consistent. shady shit. Yeah. So so not every Seven Eleven has their own fryer, but right. they all they se- they all sell chicken as if they have the same fryer. Yes. But if you go to the the Seven Eleven that doesn't have the fryer in store, they just give you the microwave shit, 
and that just destroys it. And so, uh, like, if if I'm at the right Seven Eleven, I love it, but because they're not consistent, and I, and I only have yeah. a choice to kill one, they get demerits. Go, right? They get demerits yeah. for being Seven Eleven without a Slurpee machine. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, but I mean, I, I just but feel it yeah. comes from here. Right? Seven Eleven yeah. comes from here. I think that's an American right? invention. Yeah. I mean, Lawson really? comes from Lawson comes from uh, from Akron, Ohio. Right. I know oh, the yeah. Lawson family. I saw that. Wait, on the wait, 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 wait. You telling me some new shit? Seven Eleven is from Japan and went to the United States? Yeah. Is this accurate? I feel like I need to fact. If there's one thing I need to fact check, the, really, I had no idea about. Uh, am this. I wrong? Seven Eleven? No, is I mean, a I'll take your company. word for it. No shit. Seven N Holdings, right? Seven and I holdings. I literally don't know. I don't know. know. I don't I'm, know. I'm not, but I mean, I'll take your word for it. Shit. Not Shit, gonna step I in. Yeah. All, all I'll say I, here I, is, um, right. End of the day, I love them all. I, I, I'll I'll take them all over pretty much anywhere I'm, I'm going to in the states. So. Yeah. Oh yeah. Hundred percent. But Family Mart is king. Family Mart is king for sure. I think all the married kings. men with children choose Family Mart. Yeah. I don't know why. But we do. Hey, if we're street drinking, I'll I'll stop at any of them. It's oh yeah. <laughs> at, the, at, the at the end of the day, <laughs> it doesn't matter. Yeah, at the end of the it day, it doesn't matter. All right, man. Mega All Late right. Show, um, episode number one hundred and forty-eight. Uh, my name is Robinson Mega. This is uh, the Secret House Against the World Mega Late Show YouTube channel, as well as find us on all your streaming services. I want to thank you all for listening. And there's only two episodes left. Uh, can we get some uh, social media drops? Where can we find you guys on the social medias? Tag? Uh, do you so do that? Really, all that matters is Instagram. Find me uh, at DJ Tag. DJ um, Tag. It's mostly stories of me at Japanese convenies and uh, the occasional uh, DJ events. Um, corona aside, but they'll be starting up soon enough again. Love y'all. Yeah, uh, find me. Um, Instagram's the best one at. Mavina underscore official, and that's where you can find all my stuff. Thank you. Fast yeah. Tell it. If you wanna, if you wanna learn from a real motherfucker, and you really wanna get down and do these dances the right way, get at my guy Mavina. Okay. Beats. So dope. Ninety five. We done. <laughs>